Um, onto the webinar itself. It's fair to say that since the launch of the SDGs in 2015, they have really taken hold in the HE and FE sector. Uh, they're a really powerful global call to action in a language that's accessible to everyone. <coughs> First up, we've got John McTaggart, he's Curriculum Manager at Ayrshire College, who's going to talk about a brilliant campaign they've been running to improve mental health. So I'm going to hand over to you, John, if you want to share your screen. Oh, you have already. You're there. Oh, yep. Is that me? Yeah, just that. Okay. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to do this presentation today. Uh, I'm delighted to be able to share this with you because it's just to showcase the excellent work that the students at Ayrshire College do and the impact it has on the local community. Uh, I was going to prepare a script, but because it's such an emotive subject, I'd rather just not wing it, but just tell it how it is. Okay. So we came up with a hashtag, Class and Positivity. The students have done this as part of their event, my um, event. So, Hashtag positivity was initially set up to try it as an antidote to the negativity of social media. Social media is, can be used as a forum for bullying and uh, representing things that might not be normal. Um, so we came up with this and we use uh, sport as a forum to try and get this message across. Okay. Um, so our intention was a physical activity initiative that has been developed to improve the mental health and well-being of students, staff and wider community within Ayrshire. Okay. So, we just wanted to use sport as a hook to try and get people's attention. Um, and in order to do that, this hook was to try and engage with the community. Lots of people might have mental health issues, but they're scared to come forward. Sport can bring people together. It is a, predominantly a team game when people come together and speak to people, they feel like camaraderie. So we wanted to use sport as a hook to try and get people to seek help. Okay. We've done this in partnership with Chris Boyd. Chris Boyd is a former Scottish international football player. He was up until um, last season at Club. Uh, captain of Command Football Club, uh, Ayrshire College, Command uh, contained within Ayrshire. He's a big, big celebrity. He's well known within Scottish football, he's well known within the community. The reason why we chose Chris Boyd was because one of the students knew his younger brother, and Chris Boyd set up a charity after experiencing the tragic loss of his young brother who took his own life at the age of 27, leaving behind a young son and pregnant wife. So obviously, he had a few circumstances somebody had to go through. Chris Boyd is so mostly involved in this, so he was the ideal person because of his connection with the community with football, whether he's been a local resident of Ayrshire, coming from Ayrshire, and obviously has horrific personal experiences. Uh, and one of the students knew his younger brother. So hence the reason why we chose this. Why did we choose this other than just someday knowing uh, Chris's brother? Suicide is it's a rare event, but it's happening more and more and more often. Um, according to Herald in September 2018, Scotland has the highest suicide rate in Britain. There was an overall suicide rate of 13.9 to 100,000 population, which is higher than England and Wales. So that represents the whole of Scotland, but every community is different. The demographics of Ayrshire are different to the demographics of Edinburgh, Inverness, Glasgow, whatever it might be. So we wanted to look at what happens locally. So within the local communities, this is a uh, hyperlink, so send these, uh, I'm quite happy for these slides to be sent on these after you click on the hyperlinks. So, small town of Cumnock in Ayrshire, eight people took their own lives in six months. Um, the suicide rate in Ayrshire has doubled. Cumnock has got a population of 12,000 people. Ayrshire College has got a student population of 14,000. Ayrshire College is kind of representative of the demographics of that community, of the whole of Ayrshire. Going back to the previous slide, it said, 13.9 per 100,000. For the town of Cumnock pro rata in a 12 month period, it's 133.3 per 100,000, nearly 10 times more in the small town of Cumnock. Um, and many of our students knew many of these people, um, impacts on the whole family, impacts on the whole community. Um, so you could feel it in the college that there was. Students just weren't themselves because they're friends, or they knew a friend of a friend, or they knew somebody that stayed in a local area that tragically taken their life. There was another young person, again, one of the students, a young sister, was pals with this young girl, a 13 year old girl who took their own life, um, and again, impacted on our students, impacted in the class. So the students wanted to do an event that meant something to them that they were mostly invested in, something that impacted on their life and they wanted to make a difference. So the students thought that, or 
that social media is a major, major problem. There's too much negativity, there's too much pressure on young people. Um, so the students want to come up with this passive positive positivity campaign that would use social media for the right reasons to try and say that if you are struggling, seek help, seek support, seek guidance, speak to someone. So they wanted to use it as a way of doing that. What we tried to do was we organised an event um, and at the event we wanted to bring everyone together under the one roof and the one campus at the same time. So these are some of the organisations, there is only some of them that came to the college on the day of the event. The event itself was May the 3rd last year. There was maybe four, five, six hundred people on the campus that day. It wasn't just a football event. There was um, all the stalls in the reception area. There was beauty therapy, there was massage, reflexology. There was lots of games. There was table tennis, volleyball, basketball. So it was just an opportunity to get everyone under the one roof at the one time. And if you didn't want to speak to Choose Life, you could speak to Samaritans or called chaplains, but please speak to someone. Um, so that was what we were building towards, but as it went on, it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but that was the culmination of that. So I've created a, a short video. Um, my, my biggest difficulty was this, was trying to condense everything. Um, so the video was at six minutes and three minutes. I managed to get it down to one minute. It's not very slick, but it gives you a flavour of what we did do. So we can ask Rosie just to play that video, but that's okay, Rosie. The benefit to the students of doing this video that were mostly invested in was that this, this was done in conjunction with the rescue, SQA unit, so it was part of their course, so it had a real life initiative to work towards, as opposed to, in theory, what we do. Um, so it was really, really beneficial for the students. Okay. We did do a one-off event, but one-off event can't be, that's great, thanks very much, I'll see you next year. We want to keep this as a sustainable and add to it as well. So what we've done since then, because of the success of it, we're going to, uh, we are starting just now, we've got an inclusive dance group, we've got a disability football group, we've got a physical activity program for school children in conjunction with NHS, we've got a care, care leavers program on as well, we've got Joe Love Soccer School, Joe Love's a current um, Scotland female footballer, so we've got a soccer school for that. There's 80 kids turn up every Wednesday, 80 primary school girls, um, coached by 12 female uh, sports coaches. Uh, and we're, so we're creating an environment where young people can come together and feel part of a team. What we've done for that as well is we've managed to secure football strips for all of them kids. Um, some kids turn up and they're wearing brand spanking new kits, whether they're Rangers, Celtic, Kilmarnock, Barcelona, Real Madrid. Some kids are turning up wearing the clothes they wore to school that day. So what we've done is we've managed to secure a kit for every single one of them kids. And they'll all say passing positivity on the front. Um, so everyone will feel part of that, uh, that group, part of that team, that camaraderie. So we want everyone to feel equal. We don't want people not to come to football or volleyball or basketball or any activity because they look different. Um, so that's part and parcel we'll try to do as well. We're also starting up a boys only free football coaching for Chris Boyd Soccer School as well. Again, they'll all get the same kit. So for all these activities, we'll be wearing the same kit. They'll feel part of their cause, they'll feel part of and positivity, they'll feel part of all the local community are coming together to try and create something here. Okay. Just last week we were privileged and honoured to win the SFA Grassroots Awards for the best para football project. Para football was under the umbrella of the Scottish Football Association. Uh, para football it could be cerebral palsy, it uh, could be inclusive learning, it could be visually impaired, it could be hearing impaired, mental health is within that same umbrella. So Last week, we won the best para football project for the whole of Scotland for grassroots football. And that's testament to the students, the staff, the local communities, the voluntary organisations, and the students, because it was their idea. So we were very privileged and very honoured to win that last week. Um, and it was a great, great occasion, but it's tribute to the, the work that students done and everyone that contributed towards that. Okay. This will be this, these are all the the videos and there are many more, so these are most of the videos, so it's prominent people. Um, so young people might not listen to me because I'm a curriculum manager, they might not listen to a lecture because they're a lecturer, they might not listen to the member health officer, they might not listen because that's their jobs, that's what they're supposed to do, but they might listen to other people. So many of the students might not know these people that you need to go to, but they might know famous football players, famous wrestlers, famous actors, famous singers. So just going down the list, uh, Chris Sutton played for Celtic England, uh, Stephen Fegan is one of our uh, employees at the college who works, uh, volunteers at Samaritans. Paul McNeil works for the SFA. 
Kilmarnock Football Club, Kilmarnock Wellbeing Group within the college, Jim White, he's a presenter on Sky Sports, Amy McDonald's, uh, Scotty Singer, Helen McQueen's uh, sports personality, uh, Lionheart's one of our ex students, I'll talk about him in a wee minute, uh, Stephen Cree's an outlander, uh, Drew McIntyre, there are more of them, uh, but that's people that students might listen to them before they listen to me or anyone else, but as long as they're listening to somebody, that's the most important thing. The impact, the impact of social media campaigns, so I've just taken some quotes just from Twitter, for, uh, for Instagram, from Facebook, and I won't go through this step by step, but uh, word by word, but they'll be there if you want to read it and you get the slides sent out. But So somebody's saying generically, it's lovely that it starts to take time out to do this. Someone else thanking them on behalf of their two kids. Um, somebody also using industrial language, but that's good because this impacts on everyone. Um, but they fight every day, uh, but hearing this helps. Just to emphasise as well, this did go worldwide. So there's somebody from America seeing our videos and impacting on it and taking help that they might not have taken without that video being put out there. Um, as emotional, it's making people cry, but it's nice to see. Um, and then again, like, as long as it hits somebody, different people hit different people at different times, and, but as long as it hits somebody, and it means something to them, they seek help. That's the most important thing. That was the purpose of this. Uh, and, and that's just some of the, there are hundreds, thousands of um, quotes out there that you could use. So I want you to pay particular attention to this boy. Um, Adrian was a student of mine 19 years ago. He was 16 year old. He was probably 10 stone. And he says, one day I'm going to be a professional wrestler. So Adrian was very, very, very prominent in the campaign. He was a major contributor. Um, so. He did become the most famous wrestler in Britain. He never got to WWE, other British wrestlers did, but Adrian did become the biggest wrestling star in Britain. He was on World of Sport, he had a BBC programme as well, so he did achieve his dream. But if it wasn't for Adrian, this, pro, this initiative wouldn't have been as successful as what it was. Um, and it's just, you look at Adrian, he's, he might look intimidating, he might look strong, he might look aggressive. Uh, Adrian's from that town of Cumnock. So that town that is 10 times the national average of people taking their lives, agents for that town as well. So it was a local personality who could spread that message. So when you do get the, the link, please go on Adrian's video. It's really, really powerful and really heart-hitting. Um, but he was so, so invested. Leading up to the campaign, I kept in constant touch with him. If you look towards the dates, the, the event was on um, the 3rd of May, so a month before that. Uh, I emailed Adrian, another young, people, uh, another young person has taken their life, tragic, and Adrian said it needs to stop. And it does need to stop, and that's why everyone's doing this, because we, we do our best to try and make it stop. Um, the day before the big event, uh, nice to be nice, and just give Adrian the credit that he deserves for his contribution towards it. Adrian, every time I've messaged you recently, I've been wanting something. This is just to thank you for your help and support that, that you have given to the event. Many thanks. And Adrian emails back, always a pleasure, never a chore. John, hope it goes well. So back to the previous slide, just to sh sh like the impression of Adrian, that's something that looks strong, assertive. That's a person that contributed towards this campaign. It was emotionally invested. Uh, but that picture, I cut, I cut, I edited it from a different picture. So edited it from that. Six weeks after our event, Adrian took his own life. And what I'm trying to highlight here is that it can happen to anyone. Um, so, somebody that contributed so much to this campaign, who tried to make a difference to others, was suffering myself. You don't know who, when, where, why, but it's just impacted. And the, the comments after Adrian's death was like emotional, heartwarming, but it was comforting as well with it. As a result of his actions, horrific um, actions, people are seeking support. And so, sorry to get you a bit emotional here. No. So, I think everybody here, John, I think working in institutions is an increasingly problematic issue. And I think that everybody here will relate to an extent to, to what you're going through. And like, I think it's just very impressive for a college. Um, 
to be tackling this like this. We all know that FE struggles for cash, struggle for resources. And I just, I, I think that we really wanted to hear from a college, particularly you on this topic, because this is an issue that affects everyone. It very much fits into the SDG ethos. And I think your campaign here has really, really been something that a lot of people could could replicate in colleges yeah, and that, universities. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. So I've just got a couple more slides. So just trying to emphasise that the simplest act of kindness can make such a difference to someone in their time of need. The most precious thing you can hold anyone's a time. So please be there for people. And people don't care what you know until they know that you care. It's also a well-known quote, but it doesn't matter who you are. People don't care if you have a master's degree, whether you're a principal, whether you're a policeman, whether you're a doctor, whether you're a lecturer, whether you're a dinner woman, whether you're a janitor. But as soon as they know that you care about them, that's when you build a best relationship and that may be somebody you go to. And that's all we're looking to try and do, is get, uh, go to people to, in your time of need. Okay. So, next steps. This is Francis. I met Francis yesterday. Francis is from Stewarton, just outside Kilmarnock. So, Francis' um, son killed himself last year. A mother, um, so we're going to work with Francis going forward in the campaign. So I met her just yesterday, um, hopefully, you can see that. And today I'm meeting with Lewis. So if you just read uh, Lewis, he's on the left hand side. So Lewis is a student at the winning campus. Um, so Lewis's dad died when he was three, his stepdad died when he was 10, he went into care when he was 14, attempted to kill himself twice at the age of 15 on his 16th birthday. Lewis tried to get into the army, can't get into the army because uh, of his mental health conditions, but he wants to help, he doesn't want people to suffer in silence. And just um, last week, Lewis put this out on Twitter, um, saying he's happy to discuss his mental health, but more importantly, he's pleased to hear Sir Collins are discussing mental health. So I'm meeting Lewis at 2 o'clock this afternoon, and Lewis is going to get involved in our campaign going forward. Um, so listen to a mother, listen to a student, listen to somebody that's experienced that, uh, but just please listen to someone. Thank you so much, John. Yeah. That's really, really useful and it's a very emotional subject. And um, really thank you for sharing your time and your campaign with us.